I don't want to spoil that. How do I explain it without spoiling it? I have thoughts, I just cannot explain them in words. <laughs> another video and today I want to talk about all the books that I read in June which is a lot. June was a very good reading month but first I'm so excited to tell you that I have a new channel where I'm going to play games it's called Tea Leaf Games and it will mainly have Sims gameplay but I might also play some other games so if you're interested please check it out I'll link it below and it would be so much fun having you there as well, so please check it out. So yeah, uh, also I don't think I've introduced myself. Hi, I'm Daniela and let's get to them. So this month I read eight books, as you can see, and I'm going to talk about them as always in chronological order, so the order that I read them in. The first book is The Rocky Ridge Man by uh, Meredith March and this book is about Sonia Duncan, who's an executive who's working on this project where she has to advertise uh, Rocky Blue Jeans and she needs a model and they find Clint Silver um, who desperately needs the money to save his ranch and it's just, it's a feel-good romance I would say, there's no, I don't remember if there were spicy scenes in this one, I think there were but it's not that bad. Also, this is a very old book, so it's like 1990s, so it's from 1999, so it is quite old, uh, 25 years is a lot, a quarter of a century, so um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed this, I gave it a 4.5, also the amount of consent in this book is astonishing, like I was so happy about this. The moment she said no, he stopped. And this sounds ridiculous, but with these books, you never know. Like, you never know. So I really appreciated that. And um, it wasn't fantastic, but it did make me happy to read this, I guess. That's a very strange thing to do. But I like the characters. They were all quite well developed, also Sonia's best friend, well best friend, uh, assistant and kind of best friend is also nicely written, so I do recommend this book if you ever find it somewhere, I don't know what, but this is the first book of the month, so I did start the month really well, because this was a 4.5, which is amazing, so let's go to the next book. The second book that I read was A Love is in the Cars by Emma Goldrick. You see that and it's very much like this book like the premise is almost the same there uh, though this one has like a millionaire who goes to an island a Caribbean I think um, and he just doesn't have anything to do and he ends up in a ditch with his car and gets helped by Peggy uh, who runs a farm after her parents died and her brother's off studying somewhere and she um, desperately has to save it because they're doing badly financially and it's just not a very good book it's this terrible while I was saying that the consent in this book is really good this one is lacking a lot like a lot and the amount of times this man mentions that she looks like she's 16 or that she's way younger than she is because she's like 26 or 27 is ridiculous also none of the characters are likable james is annoying peggy is terrible it's just it's awful and their romance makes absolutely no sense like none at all the end feels rushed and kind of badly written and it's just, just there is nothing redeemable about this i gave this a two out of five i would have gone lower but some parts were funny i guess and i don't usually go low low like i have to hate a book to give it a one but this was just not very good so i don't recommend it i didn't like it it's just one of those that it's best forgotten like that's the best thing it can happen to it so 
This is Love in the Cards. The third book that I read is one I received from my friend Andrea for my first date. This is White Nights by Fyodor Dostoevsky. And this has two stories in it um, about unrequired love and depravity from beyond the grave. And I don't, I think my expectations were too high when I started reading this because I expected more from the book and that might have been my fault like the book didn't promise me anything like it says here two devastating Russian stories of solitude unrequired love and depravity from beyond the grave and that's all it says and I think I expected too much from it from what I saw on the internet and all the reviews because the first story is interesting I I like that it had a plot twist at the end, it was also kind of bittersweet and it's just... It's interesting that you get to hear from both characters, um, but at the same time I'm like, I didn't like either one of them. I don't want to spoil that. How do I explain it without spoiling it? All I want to say from this book is that you have to understand that, at least in the first story, there is a girl that's like 17 that wants to marry a 26 or 27 year old which is just yuck so mm -mm. I just can go past that and yes the action happens a year later she's 18 but that's still ugh it's no and the second story is about this man that basically has nothing better to do with his life so he goes to a funeral and while he's walking through the uh, graveyard he kind of leans down and falls asleep I think and there and he starts hearing the people that were buried that just talk to each other and it was very absurd and it didn't make a lot of sense like I didn't see the point of it it was an interesting concept that like people's souls still remain for like two or six weeks after they died but other than that it's just mm, it wasn't the best i gave this book a 3.75 because i did enjoy reading the first and the second stories it just it left me wanting more and the whole unrequited love the whole bittersweetness it's just mm, I, I didn't feel that it's just mm -mm, it wasn't for me but I am glad that I had I did read this so now I know what this is about I guess so this was White Nights by Fyodor Dostoevsky the next book that I read and one that I was really excited to read because I just I fell in love with this cover I think there's something in my eye okay it's gone it's, um, this is Lorelei's Secret by Carolyn Parkhurst. Also, this book uh, was published as The Dogs of Babel in the USA and I'm glad I have the UK version because Lorelei's Secret is such a, is like a much more appealing title, at least for me. So this book follows Paul Iverson whose wife died on a random day in October and falling from a, um, apple tree and the only witness to her death was their dog Lorelai which is why it's called Lorelai Secret and I didn't have that many expectations from the book but this book blew me away it's from the perspective of the husband as he's trying to figure out how his wife died like what happened was it an accident was it not um, and just trying to get over his grief because um, he really really loved his wife and it's it's from his perspective and I don't usually enjoy first-person perspectives but this one was so well written I gave this book a five stars this was the first five stars of the month but I loved it I loved it so much I loved the way he explained everything also he's such an unreliable narrator and I love unreliable narrators because it's just so much more fun it's so much more fun and it's just again there are twists and turns and things you wouldn't expect and he gets obsessed with trying to make his dog talk at one point um through throughout the book like that's a big point and it's just such a good story and it's so well written so well wrapped up and it's just you're left wanting for more but also feeling like this was the perfect amount, if that makes sense. I just, I fully recommend this book. This is 
an amazing book. I love this book and I'm very happy that I got to read it. So this was Lorelei's Secret and if I'm to recommend any book, please read this one. It's so good. Like, I promise, it's so good. After that, I wanted a little bit of a palette cleanser, so I read Osaka. This is doesn't have an author. Can you see that? But it does have a translator. This is translated by Thomas I. Elliot. Um, this is basically a tour guide. Um, it's, it's not really a book. <laughs> um, but it's so interesting. See, it has pictures from Osaka. If it focuses, there we go. And let me find another picture because it's just, see like this picture here. Do you see that picture with all the people at the mall? And so I, I just, do, I, okay, let me get there because I have thoughts, I just cannot explain them in words. Um, this book, I find it fascinating. It's a tour guide, there's nothing impressive about it at all, but it's just, in this book they refer to things as modern and this is something new and this is what happened and this is how they're leading and it's just it's so funny because this book was written like 1970 i i believe 1970 so it says how things were new or just innovative and now it's none of that it's so interesting it's like um an artifact from the past saying artifact might be a bit much but the world has evolved at such a fast pace that this being modern is now outdated it's crazy um also i, I love seeing people in their day-to-day -day lives captured in pictures because you see all the fashion how people dressed how they were and it's so interesting and also the pictures are so I don't know if vintage is the right world. I mean, it definitely is, but it's just, it, it gives a feeling of nostalgia that I haven't lived, but I can still get from this book. And I just, I loved it. I gave this a three stars. No reason, exactly. It's just, it's a tour guide. It doesn't, it's not much written in here. Um, you do have places, you have restaurants, you do have some um, historic background, but it's a tour guide. Um, I'd be curious to know if some of the restaurants they recommend still exist, but yeah, I mean, it's a nice look into the past, if you will. So I'm really glad I read this. So this was Osaka. The next book that I read was The Mystery Book of the Month, which turned out to be The Sixth Man by David Baldacci. And it's basically about Sean King and Michelle Maxwell, who are like private investigators and they're called, um, by one of Sean's friends who's a lawyer to help on a case, but he gets, like the lawyer friend gets murdered. So they have to like figure out how that happened and also help his client prove his innocence, if he's innocent. And it's just, it's such a thrilling book. It's so well written. In the beginning, I was unsure about this because they just keep telling you things and I'm more of a show me not tell me kind of person but then I uh, searched it on Google and I found out that this is the fifth book uh, of the King and Maxwell series so it's understandable that they told you things in the beginning because they had to connect it to the fourth book so it made perfect sense but other like once you get past the first chapters which are again, entertaining as they are. Like, you don't have to read the other books like I did. I haven't read the others and I had so much fun reading this. Also, this book looks huge. Like, look at this. Um, it has like 592 pages and that's a lot, but I breezed through this book. It was so much fun. Again, I do love reading about thrillers. Um, but it's just, there were so many twists and turns and the plot and you thought you understood one thing, but then they completely rewrote it or like took a different route and it was so unexpected. And until the last page, you didn't know what was gonna happen. And it's just, it's such a good book. And the way they wrapped up, oh, I think I just hit myself. I was so excited. The way they wrapped up everything was so, so well written. I just, 
I loved it. It was definitely a book I really, really enjoyed. And I am also glad that I got to read my mystery book of the month. So, so far I read six out of six and now I just have to finish the year to read all of them. But <laughs> I am really glad I love this. So I do recommend this one as well. I gave it, did I mention I gave it a five star and I loved it. Genuinely, genuinely loved it. So fully recommend. The next book that I read was again a birthday present from Ella, thank you very much. And this is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moschweg. And I just, I loved it. This is about a very beautiful, very privileged young woman who just decides she wants to sleep for a year. Like she's exhausted by everything and annoyed and just doesn't care. Uh, both her parents died very recently I'd say and she didn't have a good relationship with them like that's very well established but she also doesn't really have any direction in life um, she has everything she needs like again she's pretty she has an apartment she has her parents house parents who are well off and now all she wants to do is sleep for an entire year and this book really surprised me it's just the way it relays ugly things is so beautiful it's it's very real it just most of the people in this book are unlikable like most of them i'd say even the main character you can't like her like you love that you don't love her does that make any sense because she's just I don't know, she's all over the place and it's great because as a 24 year old I fully relate to everything she said. Um, I too wish I could just sleep for one year and then wake up as a new person but it's just, it was such a good book. Also the amount of references to um, just events and celebrities and moments uh, that are like in the 2000s because this book is 2000 and 2001 that's when the action happens and if you don't know a lot of the things there are a lot of tv shows mentioned like um the friends or sopranos or um a lot of celebrities so i do think it'd be very interesting to know how this book would be received in like 50 years when a lot of TV shows, a lot of celebrities just becomes obscure because even right now I didn't know some of them um, and I didn't care to search for them, but I did know the majority. Um, it, is, it was a very interesting book, again, um, just so good. Also the amount of pills that she takes is, is a lot. So. Um, yeah, I really like this book and I gave it a 4.25. I wanted to give it a 5, but I felt like there was something missing. It was it was almost there, but it couldn't just pass the threshold. It was just, there was something missing. I don't know what, but there was something missing and I missed that. So 4.25, but still a fantastic book and I'm glad I read this. And the last book that I read in June was Les Vacances Talin. This was in French. Insane. I never do that, but this was in French. Um, this was um, adapted from the Le Derrick au Abbey by André Massepin. Um, this was adapted for use for the ninth grade, which explains why I was able to read this um, by A. D. Chapovnikova. And yeah, I mean, it basically talks about a boy who goes on vacation with his family, but his father works in the petrol industry as an engineer. And when they're on vacation, Alan, the main character, makes some friends uh, there and they also find like an oil place and so his father gets to work there and it's just I gave this a two star not because it's in French because it's just it feels very petrol industry propaganda <laughs> if that makes any sense it's just 
I didn't really understand the purpose of this. Was it to make young boys interesting in the petrol business? Because it's just... Mm. Um, at, at one point, um, him and his friend Martin have a fight because Alan's dad works as a petrol engineer and Martin doesn't want Alan to tell his father that there's petrol in the area because uh, that will affect his bees and the nature and everything but Alan still does it um, like he receives permission from his friend but, and then he tells his dad and then Martin becomes interested in the petrol business as well which makes no sense but okay and it just again it feels very much like a propaganda um, it was a very easy read probably mainly because it was adapted for a ninth grade to be able to understand this, but <laughs> it was nice reading something in a different language and also the fact that I understood like more than three quarter of the things just by reading it gave me such, such a motivation boost and it's just, it, it, it I felt good about myself that I understood this, so it was good for my self-esteem, like yeah, I still know French. Yeah, I can talk it, but I know it. So this was the last book of the month. Now for a little bit of statistics, because I love it. Let me just look it up. Okay, so in June I read eight books, which amounted to 2,172 pages, which is a lot. It's like, I was so close to beating February, which was my most read month of the year but I was, I was so close, but I didn't want to force myself too much and then not enjoy reading. So uh, it's the second placed month of the year, but it's still very good. I read both short and long books. I read mostly fiction, which makes sense because a lot of these are fiction. And my star average was 3.69, which is amazing because this month I I really enjoyed the books that I read, the majority of them at least, so I'm very, very happy about that. I just, any month where the books that I read I enjoy is a good month. Fully believe that. Also, just to mention it, these are also some of the books I planned on reading this month that I didn't. Uh, I wanted to get further with Republic by Plato. I didn't touch this book, I just, it didn't, I didn't feel right. Um, so I'm going to book it a lot. I'm going to put it back on my shelf and maybe resume it in the autumn because right now it's so hot outside that I just, I cannot tolerate these men talking about justice. It's not my thing. Um, then there was the Chinese Ultimatum. This was one of the books I picked from my TBR jar, but I didn't end up reading, but I don't mind that. I read so many books and I enjoy so many books that I don't care that I didn't read one from the TBR jar. So yeah, and then I read some of The Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, I'm like halfway through this book and I started it this month I believe, like in June. Um, but I'm reading like 10 pages a day. I think I started in June. I, I don't remember, but um, I'm reading 10 pages a day from this because I'm doing like a 75 soft challenge, which is like a fitness challenge. And I don't want to finish this book too fast because for that challenge, I need to read 10 pages of nonfiction per day. And I only have two nonfiction books in my entire library, which is crazy, but it's what it is. And um, so I don't want to finish this too fast. So only 10 pages a day, that's why it's going so slowly. But I really, really, really am enjoying this. And then I also wanted uh, to finish reading um, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. But I am absolutely hating this. It just makes no sense. It's just so pretentious. Maybe it's not for you, but for me, it just feels very pretentious. It, it's, it's just the language is, quite difficult, I would say, like, it doesn't flow, it's quite stagnating, and I'm not enjoying reading this. Also, in one part, there's this priest who beats a young boy because he did nothing, like, he did nothing wrong, and it's just, I was so angry at that part, and I'm just, maybe I will finish reading this one day, this month was not it. So yeah, those are some of the books that I'm 
also looked at or wanted to look at in June but didn't get the chance to so yeah once again these are the books that I read in June and I'm so happy that I did I genuinely loved most of them not all of them but most of them and that that's amazing and I hope that the next month will be just as great so that was it from me what books did you read in June? Did you have fun reading it? And what do you plan on reading next month? Please like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget about my second channel where I play games, specifically Sims 4, so please check that out and I'll see you the next time. Bye! I just give the earth my soul Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls